Lily, are you singing, huh? Well, amen. Good old Michigan. Should be melted by Monday. And then below zero on Tuesday, and then maybe snow on Wednesday. myself at a crossroad and knew the time was right for God's Holy Spirit spoke to my heart that night showed me my lost condition I bowed in full contrition now I'm in a new position since I made up my mind I made up my mind no matter what others say I will follow Christ and walk in his ways Though the battle gets hard and the road gets steep, that's okay. I've set my heart on becoming like Christ, dying with Him and raised to new life. All the things of this world I'm leaving behind, cause I made up my mind. Trouble came running to me, so I had to make a choice. Would I run or take a stand against this evil force? After all God's done for me, Jesus' blood has set me free. I choose to walk in liberty, cause I made up my mind. I made up my mind, no matter what others say. I will follow Christ and walk in His ways. Though the battle gets hard and the road gets steep, that's okay. I've set my heart on becoming like Christ, dying with Him and raised to new life. All the things of this world I'm leaving behind, cause I made up my mind. All the things of this world I'm leaving behind, cause I made up my mind. I was taught the scriptures before I could read them. I found them to be true, that's why I believe them. With all of my heart, my soul, and my strength, with every song I sing, I choose to be a Christian. I will follow Christ, carry the cross, that leads to light. I will be true, stand for my convictions. Whatever others do, I choose to be a Christian. As this world grows darker, my lamp will be burning, kindled with love for the one who is worthy. He gave his all, so I'll give mine. I'll lay my life on the line. I choose to be a Christian. I will follow Christ, carry the cross that leads to light. I will be true, stand for my convictions. Whatever others do, I choose to be a Christian. I will be bold, unashamed. Of the gospel of his name, of his name, I choose to be a Christian. I will follow Christ, carry the cross that leads to light. I will be true, stand for my convictions. Whatever others do, I choose to be a Christian. Whatever others do, I choose to be a Christian. about choice. 
ever since that tree went in the garden and before. Devil had a free will, he used to have a good name. He exercised his free will to do wrong. The name was changed to the devil. And all them angels up there had a free will because a third of them chose to follow him. So, amen. We got to get in because we exercised our will to do the right thing. That's a blessing. If you can understand that, you could probably read the Declaration of Independence and even understand that. <laughs> the liberty that we have. My goodness. Amen. Well, I'm glad to have everyone here and Isaiah and them visiting and appreciate it. And uh, appreciate any of my kids coming to see us. Amen. And pray for Levi. He's coming in later tonight, I think, or something. I think they're on the road already. And uh, they're coming from Iowa now. So he's up there in Amish land. Amen. And uh, so God works all that stuff out. I don't know how to tell you, man. Can't tell you much. Just got to put the postscript. Put God, right? And so that's the way it is. Let's pray. Father God, we love and uh, appreciate you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, for even uh, just the whole provision of that Bible for us. It's, it's just an amazing thing. Pray, God, that you bless each and every one here. And uh, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, talking about decisions and things like this, I'll just read one illustration from Wesley's. Uh, a lot of the hymns that you see in your book, uh, they've written. they got a bunch of brothers there, a bunch of kids in the family. And uh, you mothers have... You ever want uh, conviction to set in? Just uh, she's got a book out that she wrote about rearing kids. Yeah, be like that Jewish lawyer I had. Thank God I'm not a woman. Whew. You read that book, man. You think things are put on you now? I mean, whew. all I know is the results of what she did. You can't argue with. Amen. So anybody's got a better way we get the same results? Hallelujah. Anyway, she uh, she does have a book out there. Remember that last name, Wesley good for you. Well, this is uh, talking about Dr. Ruckman all the time. He said, well, he's so negative and all this stuff, you know. He'll even tell you, he says, oh, I'm just a negative thinker. Yep, you know, like you walk down and you say, well, I wonder what's going to happen bad. Now, that's, that can get you crazy, you know, if you're looking for the worst thing. But a lot of times it's, it'll help you. It'll save you. you think a little negativity. A little negativity in your life will keep you from a lot of problems like a Christian, I mean, who in the world wants to think about being persecuted? Oh, thank God I'm going to be persecuted today. Hallelujah. Can't wait for the persecution to come on me today. You say, that's a little masochistic or something. Well, when you read that Bible, we skim over them verses. But them verses tell you as a Christian... <laughs> You will suffer persecution. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen. And I'll just quote this from Wesley. This is Wesley's expectation of persecution. John Wesley was riding along a road one day, and uh, when it dawned on him that three whole days had passed in which he had suffered no persecution, not a brick or an egg had been thrown at him, for three days. Alarmed, he stopped his horse and exclaimed, Can it be that I have sinned and I'm backslidden? I don't like reading these old guys. Whew. Well, slipping from the, his horse, Wesley went down on his knees and began interceding with God to show him where, if any, there had had been any uh, guilt or, or for his fault and a rough fellow on the other side of the hedge, hearing the prayer, looked across and recognized the preacher. I'll fix that Methodist preacher, he said, picking up a brick and tossing it over at him. 
it missed its mark and fell harmlessly beside John, whereupon Wesley leaped to his feet, joyfully exclaiming, Thank God! Thank God! It's all right. I still have his presence. See, I got to share stuff like that with you because that's how they thought. That's, that's close. That's close to God. Then others over there even today in China, oh my goodness, news that's coming from that, that area. Now they're making them worship the idols of China and the symbols of China. The Christians, and uh, and those people over there, they got smiles on their faces. Now the, the young kids and everything, they they can't fully grasp that, but the adults, they know where they're going when they die. Whew. I told somebody, I don't know if it was on the social media or whatever, but I said, you know, the way things are going, if this uh, other group of people in America. And not getting on board, we got what uh, I would I would call like a Holocaust situation coming on, and uh, you know the Jews could have avoided that if they would have had a little bit better PR. If you study the history, they allowed them rumors to come. They didn't, you know, they were separated from the community, Gentile dogs, you know, but there's no outreach to people, no helping, no no arguments against Hitler and the boys and they're coming through because there's always been anti-Semitism you got a devil you got anti anybody that's connected with God but uh, when you look at the earlier days how it creeped in and it's a bad word you don't even want I mean it just conjures up all sorts of things but I'm I don't know what else to tell you 2021 we are definitely if this civilization goes on you know, free enterprise and all that. We will be in the history books. We will be written in the history books, 2021. Yes, sir. Because we are definitely in a historical time. That's never been. So we're looking for the upper taker. Amen. I'm going to preach on uh, divine leadings. <laughs> God leading you. Amen. Go to Matthew, uh, let's see. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2. I'll try to stick with the trans, transcript, not meddle with you too much today. Matthew 2, verse 2. Let me pray. Father God, any clarity of thought, liberty of speech, and your feeling, pray that the hearers are filled. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, uh, saying, comma, uh, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him, king of the Jews. Now let's go to verse 1 of the same chapter and, and let's read 12 verses. How's that? That would be good, wouldn't it? It's always good to have the word of God. It would be good if your preacher already has the Bible to that too. And his last year right Matthew chapter 2 read 12 verses now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem oh that's a fairy tale somebody just put that together no God's very specific it was the uh, geographical locations and stuff to and uh, I like it. I'm, God thought of everything. Can you imagine that? And then I think about what I just said. God thought of everything. No, he ain't got to think. Whew. See, uh, your preacher get lost in that kind of stuff. Anyway, right here it tells you Bethlehem. Where's that, Judea? Yeah. Who's in charge? Herod, the king. And who's involved in this? Some wise guys. <laughs> and it's in a New Jersey story. <laughs> Wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. 
And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. What does Christ mean? Messiah, right? The anointed one? Just so you understand that, that part of the name. And uh, they knew where the Messiah was. They had the scriptures. Verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the, in the land of Judah, art not the least among princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently uh, what time the star appeared. And he, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. See that? Young child. Always remember that. And when ye uh, have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Now when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child, not a baby in a manger, with, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So the scribes and priests knew the scriptures. They didn't know the exact time nor were they given a sign. Or were they? If they would have read the scriptures, they would have gotten a sign. You know, Jews require a sign, correct? Yes, they do. The wise men knew the sign, and the sign was in scripture. Therefore, those religious folks apparently were not looking uh, for the one, even though they taught it in the synagogues, and they taught their kids these very scriptures. Why? Because they're concerned about the Messiah coming, right? It's just like a lot of times God's kids, us, right? Uh, we teach stuff, we know stuff, but do we believe it? And our actions, you know, prove to everybody else we don't believe it, even though it's true and it's in the Bible, right? So we, we go through those things, right? Yeah, I'll include everybody. Our Lord walked and talked and fulfilled the scriptures to a T, and the religious crowd as a whole missed their own Messiah. Now, our text is found, once again, in, in verse 2. Uh, Where is he that born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and come to worship him. Now, the individuality of divine leadings is throughout the Bible. Uh, we have seen a star in the east. That's what it said. Uh, God leads each one in his own way. But the way he chooses is precisely appropriate way for each one of us. Simple shepherds with scripture associations are led by angel testimony and angel song from the night skies. Wise magi with the astrological associations are led by the varying appearances of planets and stars in the clear eastern heavens. Angels or stars, they do but fit to the differing needs of men. And so it suggested us to us the important truth that while God's saving dealings with men are always one, that means individual, their forms are variously adapted to the condition and disposition and ability of each. And the exceeding grace of God is seen in that adaptation. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, God deals with individuals. God leads individuals. God uses things to lead individuals. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Now, no one else was led, just as the shepherds were, and, and none just as the magi were. God knows each one, reckons for each one, and deals with each one. There's no being lost in a crowd. There's no fear of unskillful dealing because of our case is not precisely uh, understood in the world. We go out one by one. And all the while, we're in the world. We are simple units before God. Uh, somebody said, uh, if, if you were just taking uh, 
an analogy? Anyway, if you had a zero, it's a zero. If you put a one in front of it, that zero becomes 10. And so the more ones before the zero, the greater the zero. So they say the more people that love and serve God, the greater that God is shown to the world. But it's by units. It's where you are, where I am. It's our responsibility. Now these wise men were certain of their find. They were confident of the location of the city and, and boldly sought for specific information. They didn't hesitate to tell the king they looked for a king. They wanted to pay homage to him. An Eastern custom of bowing before a king. And that custom, believe it or not, if you look at history or any of these movies or anything, China or anything, any emperor, you don't want to lift your eyes up unless he tells you. Or next time, the next thing you'll see is, is a bouncing of the floor and you'll look and your body's over there. I mean, they would chop your head off. These people, whew, we, we have no idea about that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's what they did. They wanted to pay homage, right? So what sort of a star it was that led the wise men, how they learned from it that the king of the Jews was born, how it went before them, how it stood over where the young child was, we don't know. But they're sure pu pushing this constellation after 200 years. Me and my wife went to one of those places where you look at the stars and they were showing the whole thing. You know, and I was excited. I got goose pimples all over it. Then I read my Bible, you know, and come to the conclusion, your preacher believes it was an angel. Now, the star thing, anyway, is not study class. I just believe it's an angel, that's all. Yeah, stars are pretty big, you know. This would have to be a super little one to be doing what it did. I mean, real little. And, uh, but amen. And that's why you got a King James Bible, that's why you do scripture, scripture. And a lot of things will pop out to you. And uh, so just in passing, as we're reading, Nobody really knows for sure, they say. I believe you can go in Scripture, and uh, you can find out for yourself. But more or less, conscientiously, the whole civilized world was waiting. They really were. <laughs> they were waiting. You know, all of us right now are waiting for something. Same people are waiting for something. They're looking at the TV. They're looking at everything. They're saying, there's like an atmosphere. It's like... It could be exciting if you wanted it to, if you really, really went the extra mile and said, this looks like, I mean, no time ever in history the world is gathering together like this, except with Nimrod and stuff. You know, this could be the time that the Lord comes back. Yeah, you guys have been saying it for 2,000 years. Yeah, but it looks like everything's in its place. It's getting, really starting to get locked into this thing. So it would be an anticipation, I guess, for most Christians, unless they're letting fear rule their life. If they're letting fear rule their life, then that's a whole other thing. And they'll be with others that fear. They just they gravitate one with another. But uh, here, they knew what was going on. The Jews actually knew. They knew, uh, in a sense, about Rome. But it's how their teachers taught them and influenced them. That stopped them from even recognizing the Messiah. But how many thousands were healed? I don't know. Relieved of demon possession. Fed. Raised from the dead. All these things that he did to fulfill prophecy. But the religious people, jealous, envious, tried to make him out to be a devil. And that hadn't changed. But there's always somebody in the crowd wants to touch the hem of his garment. There's always a, a, you know, a military man somewhere that needs God to do something specific for him that will cry out to him, recognize him as God. Yeah. God's not done. Not by a long shot. That Holy Spirit's moving. If you open up your eyes, you can see a lot of good things happening right in our land. But these wise men from the east, 
reading scriptures, reading, reading all those books of astrology. And it wasn't a worship of the stars. It was understanding that the stars had a language because they read the Psalms. Remember? Stars speak. Tell you directions of things. Seasons. I mean, good night. They learned all that stuff from looking up there. Learned about uh, when the lunatics came, too. <laughs> but they also knew when to plant. I know people today, they use the Bible to plant. Well, Grandpa Kirk did. He knew exactly when to plant. When they were going to say, where do you get that? He says, over here in Leviticus or something, or some Old Testament thing and go through there, you know. I guess it works. Anyway, there can be no doubt that the Magi took their journey in obedience to direct revelation from God. And since we are told that God warned them in a dream not to return to Herod, so that they departed to their own country another way, it is but reasonable to suppose that their outward journey had been directed in a similar manner. In other words, hey, wake up, dummy. See over there? You got to go that way. Fall the star. This only happens every 400, 800 years. Probably, I don't know. They're keeping track. They're probably right. I just got questions about maneuverability. <laughs> Divine leadings in this story are obvious to any that read it and see the odds against the natural fulfilling of it. Have you any divine leading in your life? You think about that for a while. Everything to you is coincidence or by chance, is it? I mean, these men were vessels that God used. They were led, they were confident, would not quit until they fulfilled their destiny. God has his plan and he has his vessels. He will lead and empower them to fulfill his goals. Now the Jews seek after a sign, and when Christ began his ministry, he told them the sign they needed was about Jonah. But he also told them about Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness and compared it to himself and the crucifixion. Sinners get the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as their gift from God, and his divine leadings will arrange the time and place, but he'll not make them accept it. He'll not make them accept it. I don't know if you have any, my, mine is less and less the older I got. But when I was working in, 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 the, in the public eye mo most of the time, and you get all sorts of uh, answers other than what you wanted. But most of the time it was, oh, I heard that before. Yeah, my aunt told me that 20 years ago. Yeah, you know, the, all these people that are still living and breathing God's air are like telling me something. I'm saying, man, buddy, if you only knew the mercy of God. Wow, you've been told how many times? And some people haven't even got the message once. And you're still not saved. Whew. Anyway, you think about the times in your life. and You take a moment. I mean, this Christmas time, right, season. And you read the account of our Savior's birth in the Gospels. You look closely at God's leadership and all the details. Now think about your experience with God and the different encounters you have had that have made you curious about a divine hand controlling things. Remember the times of almost getting killed? You ever have them? How about the times of loneliness and despair? The times of meeting those with a gospel message. Hearing a gospel message on TV or radio. How about strangers helping you just in the nick of time? How about strong feelings not to go a certain way? or do a specific thing. I mean, experience in the miracles in life of an unseen hand. Today, as you sit here in church, uh, could you believe this? 10, 20, 30 years ago, as what's happening now. No, I, 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 to tell you the truth, I never thought the American people would ever allow it to get this far. And that shows you how deceptive the devil is and how deceived this America has been for three, four generations. Trusting people to teach our kids and not even reading the textbooks. 
just saying, well, they're smarter. They went to school. They know how to teach. They know how to do all this stuff. And, you know, they get all this stuff together. And, and so, and we te taught our kids in, in, in the other generation, you know, you will obey authority. You will listen. And, uh, man, who'd have thought? But you see, that's not even the teacher's fault. That's the parent's fault. And even deeper than that, it's the Christian's fault. Letting one woman take God's word out. Madeline Murray, bulldog, uglier than sin. Murray had an Irish name, too. One woman with the power of the devil behind her. Doors open. She went in. Where's all the Christians? They're after the fact. Oh man! Well, who was in the who was who was up there? I mean, the senators and reps. I mean, wasn't there anybody there that could, you know, do the trumpet thing? And and when they did, how many groups actually went up against it? So, we're paying for it now. I can see God's hand in all that. I can. I can also see Him protecting us too in the midst of all that. It's that unseen hand. We're talking about uh, divine leadings. We're talking about God leading. That's something. Think about all the things it took to get you under the gospel. All those things. It was divine leadings. But once again, he cannot, he cannot make you get saved. You must want to, and you must receive him into your heart as the only way to get to heaven. So listen closely, people. We have erred greatly as individual children of God in the thankful stage of our Christianity. I mean, these wise men show us the zeal of knowing the truth and the sacrifice of fulfilling it, the sacrifice of time, time and finances, and finally themselves. What did they do? They worshiped him. They worshiped him not only when he was a babe in the manger, because they set out to find him. That's all an act of worship in their heart. Why did they do it? Why did they give? Man, they premeditatedly already had their gifts ready. Expensive gifts. And each one of them is a message. It's amazing. If you want to look at it like that, if you want to be excited that you got God's word on your lap with no errors, inspired, perfect, I was going to tell you this morning with Paul, God never told any of us to interpret Scripture. Only time it was interpretation was with the tongues thing. But he did say preach it. You ought to look it up. Why? It's just, it's God. It's his word. Deliver it. People messing with it, tearing it up, and ain't giving the message out. That's who we are. The thankfulness, though, whew, that's something. You think about how many times has a divine leadership been involved in your life thus far? How many times have you taken it for granted? You actually think you are doing everything for yourself without God, don't you? Sure you do. When will we learn when will we grow up and love God who has graciously put up with our lack of worship? I mean, remember at work, I'm no spiritual giant back in those days, you know, working machine shops and steel factories and doing roofs, doing everything, you know, to provide for the family. And, you know, I'd say to someone, I'd say, well, thank you, Lord. And guess what are you thanking him for? You did that. You know how to do this. You did this several times. I said, thank you, Lord. Why did you do that? Because I'm thanking the Lord that I can do it. Yeah, but you did it. I mean, it's your brain. He kept my brain together to do it, okay? He even puts thoughts in there that I never had before to help me work. So yeah, I should thank him. Matter of fact, I just thank him anyway because I'm saved. Right there, everything else is his. According to scripture, thank him for it. Be thankful. But see, after a while, you do things, it's normal, right? 
you do things, you learn things, you learn how to do them better, you read books on how to do them better, and you're getting all this, this knowledge and everything, and it's all good. It's all right to do. But where does God come in in all this? Yeah, but I did it, preacher. I just give God the glory. Well, you don't have to. I do. I'm just going to give it to him. But you did it. He did it. He did it through me, okay? I refuse to be a humanist like that. I really do. That means you'll never upgrade yourself. Oh, yeah, I can do all that. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. See, I can do all that. Give him glory. Go ahead and do it. Courage. Strength. Wisdom. Him. Talk about divine leadership. Because when you're done at the end of the day, stuff's hitting the fan, other things are happening, you ought to just say, man, I've worked uh, maybe two years, no major problems. And so you're, you're in control of that too, aren't you? You better start thinking right. No, no major problems because if you're God's kid, he protected you. If he was to open up that dimension and show you what you had against you, you'd pass out and die. I mean, I can remember when, I hate bringing Hollywood. I'm not going to bring too much of that. Anyway, Alien came out. And, uh, you know, it was on the screen and everybody's looking at it. First time I laid eyes on that booger, I said, you know what? I saw that sucker before. There's just something about whoever made that, that peckerwood there. That was just, it was like something that, yeah, that's, that's got to be it. So I don't know how ugly and stuff they are, but I know it's a result of their nature. They some ugly, ugly out there. And they do ugly things. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I don't want to behold that. I don't want to see none of that. I don't want God to all of a sudden, you know, one day go out in my car and, and all of a sudden he puts me in that zone or something and, you know, where you're just sitting there thinking and then all of a sudden, boom, you look in your mirror and you see what's all around you or something. You know, it's sort of funny, right? It's comical. But if he did that, we couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. But see, we forget about all those other things. Like a person, you know, you, you grow up, you, you tithe, you offer, you do your thing. And for some strange reason, you got to get a new, uh, uh, I better not use that more. I think I'm talking about her in the refrigerator. But anyway, you got to get a new refrigerator. Why? It's just too stinking old. I mean, it's got to be eating up more electricity, you know, it costs us more money on the bill. Is it working? Yeah. You ought to talk to other people who got problems. Man, we just can't get one to last more than two years. Or washing machines. You know, this little stuff like this. You know? You sit down and start figuring out money. And you watch how it starts flying. If God ain't got your money, he ain't got you. He ain't got your heart. It's God. And he will rearrange stuff where you'll be dropping 20 grand over here, 10 over here, 5 over there, and when Whoa, it's me. What's going on? Check it out. Check out how you worship God. With money. With your body. With your spirit. I mean, that's what the Bible says. And how do you learn divine leadership? You, you, you learn it the hard way. We're human. I don't know of anybody that got saved and did any growth in the Lord without stuff happening to where God leaves no doubt that he's operating this thing. Because you've got to have these things every now and then in your life. You've got to have several of them to wake you up, slap you a little bit. Why? Because, come on, you studied enough stuff. The greatest drives in any human is sexual and survival. Them two. Look at any book. Those two will make you do some weird stuff. It's in your nature. So when you succeed in your efforts, you're saying, see? Where's God in all this stuff in your efforts? Traveling mercies, maybe? I hope you pray for traveling mercies. You know, your food, little things like that. No, Americans have stopped. Uh, George, you go to any restaurant, you, it's a blessing to finally see somebody bow their head. 
And some of us stand up and say, well, how many is born again? You'd be surprised how many of them have raised their hand, and probably are. This is one that caused no trouble. Anyway, I guess I digress from the wise men. But if you're a wise man or woman, you understand God's divine leadings. If you've been saved for five, ten years, if you can't see different things taking place in your life that he's kept you away from, or blessed you, or opened doors, or gave you a job, or do, you know, answers to your prayers. God does that. And God ought to get the credit. I mean, this time of the year when we see God's plan illustrated in the manger, and later with the wise men, thousands of American Christians will go into debt for their kids' toys, and never go into debt for a missionary or mission program, they won't even give what they're supposed to to their churches. And churches are closing because of it, and missionaries are coming home from the field, and God is leading, and we miss it. And he'll take his hand away. And you will lose your investments, your jobs, your health. Oh, because God's a mean God. No, no, no. He can be austere, but I'm telling you. Simple, black and white. He says, man, I mean, I'm giving you everything. I'll give you the abundant life. I'll give you everything. I mean, I'm your dad. All I was asked you to do is this. I mean, that's how you got saved, right? He sent the missionary. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave. He gave himself. He is the first missionary. Then after that, the burden ought to be on us to like, people need to get saved. Okay, I can't go to that map. So what do I do? I find somebody that's, like, like Jack Wood says, find a good horse and put your money on him. <laughs> and, and you just, you're, you're sort of being consistent with the Bible, your belief. You've got to exercise your will to be saved. Hearing the gospel, the gospel's got to be delivered. That's for all dispensations. The end of Mark there, Matthew. All dispensations. All people. It's left for future tense when you read that verse. So, I mean, we already know what to do. So you can see God's intervention in your life. It can be some hard times, and he can get you out of them. Then you could have nice times, he puts you in hard times. So you understand where you're at. Amen. Why in the world is this message? Well, this message is because 2021 is going to be tough. And if it's not tough, I'm, I'm suspicious. <laughs> I'm really suspicious. And we still have to pray that president back in. And I wonder if this time that we've had, if God is checking our temperature at the church, seeing how many people really care, or how many people have enough discernment to see that what's going to happen if he doesn't get in. Or how many people, what are they going to do? Are they going to be led of God? Are they going to know what to do when stuff happens? All these different things are probably going on. A litmus test. God knows how to do that stuff. He tests you. He tests his whole body. Test everybody. Touch nations. There is a scale, right? Dust on the scale to God. I mean, they're just nothing. He can take a king. He can put them up. He can put them down. He can take people that were worshiping him and put them over a heathen kingdom. Like Daniel and Joseph. I mean, put him right up there. Come on up here. You're God. Because you're associated with him. He divinely intervened in our land, in our country, because of the advice he gave you and you gave me. I mean, kingdoms recognized who he was. Man, why couldn't, have, why couldn't God put a heathen in charge of us? Probably had him in there for a long time. Um, people. Whew. Well, we just don't want to get the complaining and murmurings. He said, "Be." Uh, he said he asked us to be glad with you know food and raiment. You know he told us to occupy till he comes, and giving the gospel out to here, there, and everywhere, warning us of the dangers of settling in and making this place a permanent home. 
and not heaven. I mean, your children will never learn true sacrifice until their parents learn it. They'll never give if their parents won't give. They'll never honor the house of God if their parents don't. They will never read their Bibles, pass out tracts, or pray if they never see their parents do it. But God. That's what we cry out. You must see how well I'm parenting. So well adjusted and logical and loving and caring and investing. And you said to take care of my family, even if it's at the expense of your little plan or local church emissions. After all, the family is more important than those. <clears throat> I've definitely heard that before. So you enter heaven empty handed. Your children disrespect God in this program. Your money's gone, and you wonder what happened. You look, I mean, you just took for granted every divine leading in your life and used it for your own selfish reasons. This is a day of rejoicing over all God has done for us and what he will do for us. We need to be wise and acknowledge the leadings of God and obey the scriptures. I mean, can you not see the signs of the times? If you're lost here today, lost person, you need Jesus now, not later. You're not here by accident, Christian. You're not here by accident either. You look for divine leadings in your life, and, and on Christmas, be sensitive to his leadership with family and friends. God wants them saved. God wants you to teach your kids his ways. God deserves us to love him more than anything else. He deserves that. He's due it. Even today when you leave, just be aware of things that are going on. You'd be amazed how he helps you. I can look across the whole congregation. I know what our prayers were for, on Wednesdays for people, and you can see answers to prayers. I remember when John was sitting in a wheelchair going, he was out of his mind. I figured he's never coming out of that. Me, Silver, and Richard went to see him, and man, it was like he was in his right mind or something. I thought, what's going on with this? driving his truck, 92 years old. Sure, he's got pains and aches and everything, but God, it's divine. I'm telling you, it's divine. Brother Suver, I mean, come on, guys. Well, that's because he didn't smoke or chew or hang around with people that do. Yeah, that probably is a lot. What is, yeah, the physical. But the things that happen in his lives, a lot of hardships, a lot of things happening about Sewer's life. God got him through. God provided for him. God's turned them grandboys around, making them responsible, giving them kids, children. And I look at that and say, wow. If any two should have been killed, like your preacher, they should have. <laughs> There's some bad boys. But you just look at that. Look at the road. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you feel. I mean, we, we pray, God, get the road done. Get this done. We're a little church. We ain't got nothing. I mean, electric, gas bills, I mean, they do come. And you do what? You say, God, we need some divine intervention here. And uh, things start happening. It works. Something's working. So we just got to get us all believing in that direction. Because if you're waiting for him and watching for him, good things happen. That means you're concerned with your relationship with him. When you take it for granted, you just do your, you know, your little every mundane and sometimes exciting things or whatever you do, and, and he's nowhere in there to be found. And You build your own little world. You make this, this, this home here your last home your permanent structure and you totally forget about heaven and you totally forget about eternity with your God and uh, he's got to show you what's important good father's got to do it just got to do it amen so I'm sure glad y'all came here this morning I hope that you got something out of the message this morning and the teaching and uh, that we're we need to be aware I mean if no joke, it's not going to be business as usual, I'm telling you. As parents, we need to really pray for January 6th and before. Pray for those that are involved in these explosions. 
afraid they're not being used, you know, as part of the whole propaganda thing and getting rid of the Dominion machines and all this kind of stuff. We got a lot of things to pray about, man. I mean, God's got to do something. We got, we got no, we don't have enough money. We don't have enough of what they got. But God is enough. He can change everything. 